Lesson 15.2c, Solving Volume Problems, Rectangular Prisms. When we solve real-world problems involving the volume of a prism, we can choose to use either of the volume formulas. We can do length times width times height, or if we know the length and width and a base is given, we can do the base times the height. We can multiply each of the three dimensions separately, or we can look at the length and width just as the base layer and multiply that by the height. This capital B represents the length times the width. That's why it's a capital. This box is shaped like a rectangular prism. And the prism is 18 and a half inches long. It's 9 and a half inches wide and 5 inches deep. What is the volume of the box? We can use volume is equal to base times height. The first thing we do is choose one side to be the base and find its area. We can use the bottom of the box and we're going to multiply 18 and a half by 9 and a half. First thing we do is convert the mixed numbers to improper fractions. 18 and a half becomes 37 halves and 9 and a half becomes 19 halves. We multiply 37 times 19 and we get 703 and we multiply 2 times 2 and that's a 4. We have 703 fourths and we keep this as an improper fraction because we need to multiply again. By keeping it as an improper fraction, we can now multiply it to 5. We can write 5 as 5 over 1 and multiply straight across. 703 times 5 is 3515 and it's going to be over 4 as the denominator. And this is a division problem, isn't it? We have 3515 divided by 4 and we find out that it's 878 we have a 3 as our remainder, that's going to be our numerator, and our 4 divisor is going to be our denominator. We have 878 and 3 fourths cubic inches for the volume of that box. Now let's use the length times width times height. This rectangular swimming pool is 20 meters long, 8 and a half meters wide, and 2 and a half meters deep. What is its volume? That means we have 20 times 8 and a half times 2 and a half. We need to convert these to improper fractions. We have 20 over 1 times 17 halves times 5 halves. Now, we cross cancel to simplify before multiplying. This will make our life easy. We have a 20 and a 2, and there is 1, 2, so we cross this off and make it a 1, and there are 10 twos in a 20, so we make that a 10. Now, if you look over here, we have a 2 and a 10. We can actually cross cancel again. There's one 2 here, so we turn it into a 1. And a 10 has five twos, so we turn that into a 5. Now, look at, we have 5 over 1, 17 over 1, and a 5 over 1. That means we have 5 times 17 times 5. Well. We think 5 times 5 is 25, and we can multiply in any order and get the same product, right? Commutative property of multiplication. So we have 25 times 17, and that gives us 425. We know the swimming pool has a volume of 425 cubic feet, or feet cubed. Take a look at this prism. It's showing it's got a length of 2 centimeters, a width of 4 centimeters, and a height of 6 centimeters. So the volume of this prism is 2 times 4 times 6. It's 2 times 24. It's 48 cubic centimeters. Now what happens if we double one of the dimensions? Will the volume double? And we can double this 2 to a 4. Now we have 4 times 4 times 6. Well, that's 4 times 24, and 4 times 24 is 96. It's 96 cubic centimeters. If we double this to be a 4, now the entire volume is 96 cubic centimeters. The volume becomes 2 times greater when we double one dimension. The volume doubled. Now what happens if two of the dimensions are doubled. So we're going to double this to be a 4, and we're going to double this to be an 8, and that's still going to be the 6. It was 48 cubic centimeters. Now we have 4 times 48, which is 192 cubic centimeters. 
When two of the dimensions are doubled, the volume is four times greater. The volume quadrupled. When we only did this one length, the entire volume doubled. Now that we did two dimensions that are doubled, the entire volume is four times greater. It's quadrupled. What happens if all three of the dimensions are doubled? We double this one to be a 4, we double this one to be an 8, and we double this one to be a 12. Now we have 4 times 96. That's 384 cubic centimeters. 384 is 8 times 48. That means the volume is 8 times greater. The volume octupled. When it's 8 times greater, it's octupled. When we double one dimension, the volume becomes two times greater. The volume becomes two to the first power greater. When we double two dimensions, the volume becomes four times greater. It becomes two to the second power greater. When we double all three dimensions, the volume becomes eight times greater. That's two to the third power greater. So you can see what's happening here. Two to the first power is two. And 2 to the second power is 2 times 2, that's 4. And 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. And since we're dealing with three-dimensional figures, they have three dimensions, there is no 2 to the fourth power, there's no fourth dimension in the figures that we're dealing with. We're finished with less than 15.2. We're going to move on to 15.3, which is broken into two parts. First part is writing equations using the volume of a rectangular prism. Have a really nice day, and I hope you'll join me for 15.3. Bye.